Welcome back. Glad you could join me again today for Tech Tips. And I'm going to show you something because, well, I've been bragging about the quality of this guitar, but I actually did find yet another little bitty defect. Nothing serious though, nothing that can't be fixed. Move that so we don't scratch the guitar on it. In spite of the fact it's a relatively inexpensive guitar, we still like to treat it good and take care of it if we can. But uh, I was bragging up this string nut and saying that uh, it's actually pretty darn good, but I actually have found a little flaw in it. Uh, one of the grooves, just one actually, isn't cut deep enough. And uh, every time I play the string on that first fret, uh, the note that I play is actually a little bit sharp. Just a tiny bit. That tells me that that slot isn't deep enough so that effectively when I play the note, I'm bending the string and it's causing it to be sharp. Further up the fretboard doesn't make a bit of difference, just on that very first fret and actually only on the one string. So we're going to remedy that and I'm going to show you how I go about it. And one of the things that you need for tools, well, not much really. In this case, I'm only going to need one. And it would be very inexpensive if I only needed one. But anyhow, I talk about fret files. Or, well, no, sorry, not uh, fret files, string nut files. Fret files are something different altogether. Don't confuse them. They actually are a completely different tool. And uh, our frets are real good. We don't need to deal with them. But the string nut, uh, you can actually buy string nut files. And they're a lot more rigid. They're a little more aggressive and would probably be the right tool for the job if you're making a nut from scratch. In this case, we're not making a nut from scratch. We just want to make the one slot just a tiny bit deeper. So what we want is something a little bit less aggressive because we don't want to take off too much material and a very economical solution to that problem I happen to already have that I use for something else. And it is one of these. Now this little item here can actually be purchased as a string nut file, but it's not. And what it is, is you open it up and inside of it is a whole bunch of these little tiny round files, all different sizes, uh, that work quite well for the job of cutting slots in your string nut because the, you can use the, the appropriate one to the size of string that you have. Now, what you need to know about these things is this is not a string nut file. This, what you're looking at right here, is an oxyacetylene torch tip cleaning kit. And uh, you can buy these things as is, complete with a little package. And uh, like I say, you know, they got lots and lots of different sizes, uh, very tiny ones. I don't know if you can even see the really small ones but uh, they're right from very small to quite large. Uh, unless you're working on a bass guitar, you probably won't need these ones. And there's also a, uh, a flat file as well, which I'm not sure what you'd ever use that for on a guitar, but well, fact is, this is not actually a string nut file, although you can buy them as such. And uh, don't be fooled because you can go out and buy these uh, in a store for as a, as a torch tip cleaner. That's what they're called. And uh, oh, even on the back, let's see. Oh, for your, tells you the drill sizes and the tip size you need to use and all that stuff. I don't know. I don't know how you're going to know which one's which and I just count them up maybe. I'm not, not sure. Anyhow, uh, if you go on to websites that sell tools for guitars, they sell this exact same thing for about double the price. Literally double. Uh, these things you can buy as a tip cleaner for about six dollars and they sell them for about twelve dollars as a nut file. Exact same tool and in fact some websites will, I don't know, they've taken the thing apart and they will actually sell you the individual ones, the sizes that you need. Uh, I don't even know what they charge for those but I've seen them individually. But I've also seen these kits being sold on uh, websites as a nut file. They're not. It's a, a torch cleaning tip. But they're handy and they do have certain advantages 
and for what we're doing, this is actually a very good tool for the job. Now, as usual, I like to save money. Well, I'm trying to save you some money too, because uh, you can take your guitar in and have it done at a, by a luthier. I don't even want to know what they're going to charge. Or you can go and buy all the special luthier tools and the proper nut files. Now, if you were making a string nut from scratch, buying proper nut files probably wouldn't be a bad idea. They're a little more rigid and a little more aggressive. If you're doing one from scratch, that would get the job done much quicker. However, I have read about guys using these things to make them from scratch as well. So now the downside to these things is they're not very aggressive. So you're gonna have to have a lot of patience if you're making one from scratch, because it's gonna take a while to file down those slots. And the uh, other thing you gotta be careful with is particularly in the smaller sizes, they're very, very flexible and uh, you won't get a very straight slot, uh, which is something else I want to talk about because you got to be careful when you're making uh, slots in your nut is because it's not straight, it's not parallel to the neck. It's actually slightly angled and in fact usually you can tell by the, the top of the, the nut itself is angled. That gives you an idea because the very front of the nut is your you know closest to the fretboard. That's your pivot point where the string is going to pivot if you have a perfectly flat slot in there, uh, weird things are going to start happening. It's not going to pivot where it's supposed to. It may even be halfway between and create a very dead sound. You'll lose your resonance and stuff like that. So it's actually quite important when you're cutting a slot, enlarging it, whatever you're doing with it, you've got to maintain that angle on it so that it actually does its job. Because if you don't get it at an angle, you're going to have problems. It's not going to work well and you're going to be very unhappy. Now, like I said, uh, you can buy actual fret files. Uh, anybody tries charging you more than about six bucks for this set, don't buy it because they're not worth it. You can buy them for, well, this is about six dollars. That's all. And uh, as a tip cleaning file for torches, uh, primarily for oxyacetylene torches, However, they do have other uses too, I, and if you've watched a number of my videos, uh, I actually use this exact same tor file set for cleaning out the main jet in the carburetor on my generator. So they're, they're the handy things, aside from, well, you can also use them for cleaning torch tips too. Son of a gun, never thought of that. Oh well, handy little thing, not real expensive, uh, comes in a little package, throw it in a corner of your toolbox somewhere, and even if you only use it once every few years, <laughs> or every quite a few years, whatever. It, it's handy to have. And uh, if you want to buy actual fret files, proper ones, I'm not talking about the things they sell like this as fret files, because they're not uh, for twice the price, ridiculous. Anyhow, actual fret files though, uh, they're over $100 for a set. So six bucks versus over $100, uh, that is a considerable savings. So. Uh, anyhow, I'm going to show you what I'm going to do with these, how to use them, or how I'm going to anyhow. I'm no expert on this stuff, but I, I'll give you a few tips on what you can do, and exactly, uh, and I'll walk you through exactly what we're going to do on this guitar, and I will show you uh, how we go about it in order to achieve what we want. Now, uh, I don't have a lot of the fancy tools. Well, actually, I do. I just don't feel like going to get them, and that means looking up information and stuff, because there is actually a proper dimension, uh, the spacing between your fretboard and your string. There is actually a proper uh, spacing it for it. I don't know what it is. You know what? I don't really care because what I'm going to do is I'm going to fix it till it works right. I don't care what the book says. Um, it's kind of the way I do things. And I'm not encouraging you to ignore uh, numbers and statistics and proper calculations and all this stuff because you do that too much, you can get yourself in trouble. But for the purposes of what I'm doing here, it's not that important that I have it exactly according to the book. What I have to have that works is, well, what works. And I'm going to show you how I'm going to achieve that. I'm just going to bring you in a little closer so you get a good look at this string nut here. And I'll show you what I'm going to do. Okay, now the first thing that I'm going to do here 
is I'm, I'm going to loosen off this string. Now this one right here, my G string, this is the one that we're having a problem with. Whenever I play that note right there, uh, it's just slightly sharp. And uh, it's the only one we're having a problem with, actually. So in order to resolve that, so I'm not bending the note when I play that first fret, is I'm actually going to make that slot a little deeper. So I'm going to show you what I'm going to do. First thing I've done is I've actually tuned up the guitar so that all the strings are good. It's where it should be because you know we want everything in normal, normal mode. Normal mode. Is there such a thing as normal? Anyhow, we, we want everything relatively normal. Okay, so uh, we're gonna we've got all these strings tuned up to where they should be, but the one I'm going to work on. I'm going to loosen that one off so I can take it out of that slot there first. That's the first thing I'm going to do. Now I'm not even going to take the string off. I'm actually just taking it out of the slot so it's out of our way so I can work on that slot. Now when you're making any kind of a modification to uh, something like this, uh, you got to be very careful that, uh, and that's where one of the things that's nice about uh, these files is because they're not very aggressive they won't take too much out and it won't make this slot deeper too fast. We have very little risk of actually making that slot too deep. Now the one that we're going to use again is uh, it's the G, G string, that slot right there that my fingernail is in at the moment and uh, we're going to just make that a little deeper but we do not want to make it wider so the first thing that we have to do is choose the correct file. We don't want to use one that's bigger than that slot. So now that you can start at either end, you can either start with one that's too big or you can start with too small. Uh, work your way up from the smallest until you get one that drops into the slot just like the string would. The next one up won't quite drop in. Then go back down one and you got the right one. Or you can start from the top end and uh, using ones that are too big to go into the slot and keep going smaller and smaller until it drops into the slot exactly the way the string would. And that way you're not going to make this, the slot any wider because we're not, that's not our goal. We do not want to make the slot any wider. We just want to make it a little deeper. And that's where these files are very good because they're not particularly aggressive. So they won't take way too much material off very fast. And uh, that's a good thing because we don't want to screw up because if we go too far uh, you can always make the slot deeper, but if you go too far with it, eh, you got a problem. You can't fix it. Okay, so uh, I'm going to go through these until I find the one that I need, and uh, that's what we're going to use. And then I'm going to show you what I'm going to do. Okay, now I do believe I have finally sorted out the size I need, and these things are a little bit messed up here, so they're not. I'm having problems. This is an old set. But okay, I think we found one that is the right size. Now what we're going to do, there's a couple of ways of doing this. You see how it just drops right in there, just nice. And what I want to do is I just want to make it a little bit deeper, but I don't want to make it any wider. So I want to make sure that this drops in. And just looking at the way the strings are sitting, I think I might have to do that one too, although I haven't noticed it's an issue. Oh no, I've got the other string sitting on top of it. Never mind. Okay. Uh, what some guys will do is they'll actually take a, a feeler gauge or something and you know lay it across the top of it. Uh, one that is the same width, thickness as this and they lay it on its edge so that it will keep this straight because that is something that uh, may be a bit of an issue is keeping it straight. Now you notice I've already got it at a bit of an angle and I'm going to maintain this angle. Now because these things particularly the smaller ones are quite flexible. It would be very easy to not get this right. So there's a couple of things you can do, like I said. One is putting a feeder gauge on it to keep it straight. Or uh, make sure you hold the other end down or just pinch on the other end and hold it tight. Either way, we are going to move back and forth in this slot. Not terribly hard. I'm actually going to do this to hold it down like that. I'm probably going to scratch up my truss wad cover in the process. But I'm not going to try and take off a great deal of material and uh, we're just going to do this slowly. I'll probably file my, if I start hurting my finger I'll know I've gone too far. See, it's okay. Good way of doing this. And uh, you know if you don't want to scratch up your truss rod cover perhaps put a piece of tape on there or something to protect it 
from the end of the file. You know, all, th all kinds of things you can do. You know, but uh, what we don't want to do, and that's why I'm leaving the strings on, is I don't want to get down level because we don't want a level groove. We want a, a, an angled groove so that we continue keeping our intonation where it should be. Now, because I don't have any devices with me for measuring, what I'm going to do now is uh, every once in a while here, I'm just going to take and put the string back in place, tune it back up to where it's supposed to be. Okay, we've got the string tuned back up to where it should be. Now I'm just going to press on this right behind the fret and see if we're actually getting a, an accurate note. Well, even that one's a little bit sharp there. We're still a little bit sharp, so that means we still got to make that slot a little bit deeper. So we'll just slack off that string again. And uh, I'm using what most of you have. I, I got a clip on tuner here. Uh, that's the, the side of the thing to use these days. And I just tune it up to the G that it's supposed to be, and then I press on there and there. And uh, actually, turns out that one's sharp too. I didn't realize that. I must not play that one very often. G sharp, A. Anyhow, uh, so we're going to continue filing this a little bit at a time and rechecking it until we no longer have a sharp note when we play on one of these frets. And I'll forewarn you, these things bend very easily, so you have to be careful not to actually buckle it. Don't push down too hard with your finger uh, as you're pushing forward with it. Otherwise, uh, there is a good chance that this thing is going to buckle up in this area here and you'll end up with a bent file. Then you'll have to stop and straighten it out. And I've actually never done this before, but I, I've seen other guys do it and I know how it's done. And like I said, I know that for a fact that this tool is being sold as a frat file. So we're not done yet. We're going to take a little more off. So. Uh, this will require some patience. Don't get in a hurry, though, uh, and go at it crazy. Uh, I, because, like I said, because I don't have any measuring devices of any sort, I'm doing it just a little bit at a time to make sure that I'm not taking too much off because we don't want to take too much off. Otherwise, we just create problems. And then I will end up eventually taking it into a luthier and I'll be paying for a whole new nut. I don't want to do that. I'd probably be tempted to try and make my own, but no, I don't think that'd be a good idea. I think we'd be best off to have somebody else make it for us. But, hey, let's let's not have that problem happen. We're just going to slack our string off again. Take it out of the groove. And we'll just uh, take our little file and slowly take a little more off. We have made some progress, so uh, we know this is working. So there you go. Uh, we're actually not quite done yet, but I didn't want to bore you silly. Uh, we have made progress. Uh, it is getting closer. And uh, <clears throat> actually, I haven't even noticed it. But uh, just checking with my tuner, actually, I noticed that a couple of the others are actually out just a tiny bit too. So maybe while we're at it. Uh, we'll do those ones too, but I just wanted to show you how with a relatively simple and cheap uh, $6 tool that you can use for a lot of other things too, uh, you can fix your guitar. And uh, if somebody tries charging you 12 bucks for one of these things, don't buy it. They're trying to sell it to you as a nut file, which it's not. And I, I'm, seriously, I've, I've seen it on uh, several websites and eBay and Amazon or whatever, I don't know where they've had it for sale as a luthier tool, as a nut file. And it's not. It's, it's an oxyacetylene torch uh, tip cleaner is what it is. But it does have other uses too. But like I said, for something like this, where you just want to take a little bit down, you don't want to get carried away and you want to go nice and slow, uh, it's a good tool for the job because it's not these, these files are not overly aggressive because uh, you know, you're going to use them a lot on a torch, and that's what they're made for. And you don't want to uh, be enlarging the orifice. You just want to clean it out. And that's why they don't make them very aggressive. 
And so as a result, uh, they're not going to take your nut down very fast. But just the same, you know, be careful, to, you know, take your time, go slow, check often. Uh, that's what I'm doing. I take a little bit off, I check it again. I take a little bit more off, I check again. Once it's where I want it to be, I don't care. I'll leave it there and call it a day. And whether or not it's actually within spec, uh, as far as clearance goes, you know, I'm not going to really worry about it because, uh, you know, the little bit that we're taking off, you know, uh, looking at the thing, uh, visually you can't even see it. You, you literally, you cannot even see uh, how much the string has gone down, uh, but it will improve the playability of it. Uh, you won't have to push as hard on the strings, and you won't be bending your notes every time you push a, a string down to a fret on the lower register there. And that you know, gives you a little truer tone or truer notes, and that's what you want. And uh, you, know, you might have to do it with more than one, you might have to do it with all of them, and uh, that's okay because this this tool here comes in with a variety of sizes to suit the size of slots. And uh, just remember, uh, you're not trying to widen it; you want to make it deeper, and that's uh, why it's important uh, using the you know variety of different sizes that they have in here. Uh, I've got to be careful which way I open it because I don't want to lose the one I'm using. Uh, you know, because there's a variety of sizes in here, uh, you can select the one that's appropriate for the gauge of string uh, that has to fit in that slot. You basically want to choose one that is the same size as your string. I guess that's a simple way of putting it, anyhow. And uh, like I said, just take your time, uh, tune it up open, and when you get the exact note that you want open, perfectly on pitch, take your time, make sure it's right, so that when you press down and play the note, that it doesn't adversely affect what's what you're seeing on your tuner, because uh, a, a tiny little bit can make a big difference. And because uh, I mean, according to the tuner, it's not out by a whole lot, but my ear noticed it. And uh, well, I, I didn't initially because of the bad frets. I wasn't playing down here much at all to begin with. Uh, now that I'm playing down here more, I'm noticing that the nut isn't that great. Uh, it is not perfect, but hey, what do you expect? And uh, like I said, if you can fix it with a $6 tool, who cares? So, a uh, little tip, uh, don't have to go out and spend hundreds of dollars on nut files, and uh, don't let anybody fool you into buying one of these things for 12 bucks as a luthier tool, because it's not. It's a, it's a torch uh, cleaning file, and they're only about 6 bucks. They're half the price what they're trying to sell them for, and how much you actually end up paying. might depend on where you live, what stores they're available in, whether you buy it online or in a store, uh, what country you're in, all that stuff. All that I know is for a fact, because I did some research uh, checking prices out before I bought, uh, did this video, and because uh, I already had this and I knew it would work well for the job, because I, I, I had watched uh, some videos where guys were using their nut files individually they were these things individually. Uh, and as soon as I saw one, I recognized it instantly uh, because I've been using these things for probably uh, 45 years or so, something like that. 40 years? I don't know. Long time. I knew what it was the minute I saw it. I knew it was not a nut file. And uh, upon doing some research, I discovered they are actually selling these things as nut files. They're not. So don't be fooled. And if you want one of these as a nut file, to use as a nut file, which is okay, um, <laughs> buy one for half the price as a oxyacetylene torch tip cleaning file kit. The whole thing. Because uh, they also sell individual ones too. And I don't even want to know. Those I didn't, I haven't even priced those. I don't know what those are. But uh, if they're selling the whole kit at double the price, I can imagine what they're selling the individual ones for. Somebody's making money off these things, anyhow. So uh, there you go. Six dollar tool, and you can fix up your string nut. And uh, oh, as I said before, yeah, this is just plastic. Oh, well, they call it synthetic bone. But it, it's really, it's just a fancy name for plastic. Uh, are there better materials? Sure. Am I going to change it? Nope. This one's just fine. Once we get it uh, filed down so that we get perfect uh, clearance on our strings, 
to the frets and everything else working the way it's supposed to, yeah, that's the way it's going to stay. And uh, what's going to cost me to do it? Well, actually nothing because I already had this thing. So even if I had to buy one, uh, that's exactly what I would have gone out and bought. I would have bought a torch tip cleaning file and I would use that as a string nut file because <laughs> well, other people are using them and it has been done quite a bit. And uh, there are places that actually even sell them as a string nut file, which they're not, but it doesn't matter. It's not the point. The point of my video is to save you some money. It's not that hard to do it yourself. If you've got a tuner uh, and six bucks, uh, you can fix your problems. So there you go. Just saved you a hundred bucks because uh, actually, uh, I think I saw some uh, nut files that were around $120 for a set. So uh, you got a set here for six dollars. So you, I mean, again, you know, if you're cutting a nut from scratch, uh, you're probably going to want the, f the proper files because they're a little more rigid and you'll get a, a truer cut. But if all you're trying to do is take off a few thousands of material, uh, one of these things will do the job just fine. Don't need to waste yourself a whole bunch of money. And you can do it yourself at home and you don't have to wait for your guitar to come back from the shop. So, hey. Five minutes from now I'm playing this. Thing. Oh, and okay. one more little tip that'll save you some money too is, uh, I want to throw this in, I for, almost forgot, is a uh, string nut lubricant. <clears throat> now, if you haven't heard about such a thing, it lubricates the strings where they go through the nut so that they slide back and forth easier. Now, there's a couple of, if you got a hard tail, it just simply makes tuning easier. You don't get that pink, pink, pink that you get when you're tightening and loosening strings. Uh, makes much smoother movement of the strings while you're tuning, so you can get much more accurate tuning. And if you happen to have uh, a trim, actually that's not even the right term, but we won't go there. Uh, if you have uh, a whammy bar uh, where your strings are going to be moving back and forth, and unless you've got a locking nut on your guitar, which not a lot of them have, and not all of them definitely, you really do want strings moving through there smoothly to try and maintain as good a tuning as possible. Now, you're never going to have it perfect, but um, what you can use is, now they actually sell string nut lubricants, and you can buy them, and if you have quite a few guitars or you work on lots of guitars, well, that might be worthwhile, but uh, another neat little trick, very cheap, in fact, pretty much nothing if you've already got one laying around. Use a pencil. Now you're thinking a pencil. Why would I want to draw on my guitar? You're not drawing on your guitar. What you do is you take your string out of the groove, you slack it off, well, actually you can do it all at the same time. Uh, you slack them off and then you take your pencil and you just kind of rotate the tip of a sharpened one. Works better if it's sharp, you can get it into the groove. And you just kind of rotate it in there a little bit and you leave a little bit of pencil lead behind in the groove, then you put your strings back on and they'll slide through a lot better. Now the reason they do that is because pencil lead, one of the main ingredients in pencil lead is graphite. And graphite is a very well-known dry lubricant. And uh, well, since most people have a pencil kicking around the house somewhere and you require such an incredibly minute amount, uh, it's probably one of the simplest and easiest ways to lubricate your string nut is just pull the strings out of the grooves, take the tip of a sharpened pencil, rotate it in the groove, leave a little bit of black in the groove, that's your graphite, and then just put your strings back on and you will find that they slide back and forth in the string nut a whole lot better. Now like I said, you know, you can buy actual lubricant. They make, uh, I can't remember how much, quite a few different brands. And I can't even remember some of the names because uh, I'm not much inclined to fall in for the things that people sell when there's something else that's handier and readily available. And uh, chances are there's probably a lot of other lubricating products that you could use that would work just as well too. Uh, but uh, like I said, the pencil lead, uh, which contains graphite, makes an excellent lubricant. Uh, and I have seen other people using it on their guitars. And I'm not talking to amateurs either, guys that actually tend to know what they're doing. And so, you know, it makes perfect sense to me because I know for a fact that uh, one of the components in pencil lead is graphite, and graphite is in fact an excellent dry lubricant. 
And so I see no reason it wouldn't work well. Um, you want to spend money, you can go buy a bottle of string nut lubricant, uh, which will probably last you the rest of your life if it doesn't dry up first, because you need so little of it, which is why I suggest just using a pencil, because for the amount that you actually need, it's hardly worth your money going out and buying a bottle of stuff. So there you go. A uh, couple of tips. Uh, you can save you a whole pile of money. Uh, if you've got a pencil kicking around the house anyhow, there's your lubricant for your string nut. And uh, if you want to improve your slots, uh, go buy a $6 torch tip cleaning file. Never mind the luthier tools. Save yourself a hundred bucks. Might take a little bit longer, but so what? Have a good day.